Nomad PU. Today I want to talk specifically about the relationship of the Nomad and the fridge. That's where the, most of the customers are getting confused and that's in how does the fridge operate, uh, how do you get the most out of your fridge. Because fridges will typically, as we've mentioned before in other tutorials, they'll have an operational range of say 10.6 right through to 14.6 volt and right through to 24 volt actually uh, uh, options. So the fridge will specifically like to operate in those ranges. So once it hits that 10.6 mark, the fridge cuts out. One of the issues is voltage drop. Voltage drop is something that people completely disregard and just don't realize. So the biggest problem we'll have is a customer will come back in with the fridge. It might be an old fridge, new one doesn't really matter. And what they've got is they've got a cable running between the power source, which is all this is. You've got to remember that this is just a power source. It just provides current and voltage and amperage. That's all it does. It hasn't got any smarts over and above. It doesn't have a good quality 11.3 volt or 11.5 volt or a poor quality. It is what it is. So this fridge here will cut out at 10.6, just using this as an example. And I'm running a five meter cable between the Nomad and the fridge. And I know that this fridge here, I've got the set at minus, so it's at thermostat, and it's not drawing down at the moment. But when it's drawing, it's showing 11.2 or 11.3 on the Nomad, but the fridge is showing about 10.8. So there is a voltage drop because this cable is pretty, it's pretty flimsy. Um, that's plugged in, that's quite flimsy, and it's five metres. What you can expect, if you ran, say, less than a four mil uh, wire, a lot of people will, and they'll run it over 10 metres, you can expect a two volt drop. So this could be a 12.6, and that fridge won't work, because it would be a 10.6 cutout, fridge won't work. It's not the power source. It is not the power source, because it's providing the voltage out, and if you took a multimeter and you, you tested it at the compressor, it would show you that at the compressor, with that voltage drop, it's 10.7. We do this a lot of times in shops where a customer will come in and say the fridge is not working and we'll look at the cabling. Sometimes the cabling is actually AC cabling, so they're using household cabling. Again, with the resistance, a lot of people are using cables that have got cuts and joins and all sorts of things over certain distances, poor quality cabling, old cabling. All those types of things will make your fridge run less efficiently. Again, the Nomad pushes out power or provides power to be drawn down and this you can see says the voltage. It's got the voltage going out. You could test this with a, power, with a power analyzer and exactly the amount of voltage going out is what's showing on the screen. It gets the other end, your fridge is showing 10.6. We'll get a call from a customer saying the Nomad's not, there's a fault with the Nomad. It's not the Nomad fault. It's providing exactly what it says. And the fridge is getting the voltage it says on its uh, little screen. And that's because there's a voltage drop. So you need to look at the connection between the Nomad and the fridge. Now, if your fridge is cutting out like mine does here at 10.6, for me, it's not an issue because I'm cycling continually and it's never an issue. But if I did want to draw it down completely to flatten the Nomad, very simply, I take the 240 adapter that came with the fridge and what I'll do is I'll plug it into the inverter, so the pocket inverter, so I know that I can plug this into the Nomad and now there is 240 volt being supplied to the fridge. From the fridge's perspective, again, the fridge doesn't know, it just says I'm getting 240 volt, it'll just keep drawing power, and this will keep providing, so you might get a day and a half more out of your fridge by doing that with an inverter. So again, try to understand that all fridges have operational voltage range that they work at their optimum performance. Some fridges will run down to 9 volt and quite happy at work. What I will say is if you've got a, a voltage of say 11.3 or 11.5 here, and it's 11.5 over here on the fridge, and your fridge is warm, it's not an issue with the Nomad. The Nomad, again, is supplying voltage. It's a fridge issue, or it's something with the fridge you need to discuss with the fridge manufacturer. Because if it's got 11.5 volt, and your fridge is warm, that means there's something wrong with the fridge. Because this is providing that amount of voltage. The voltage is the voltage. It's not a poor quality voltage that's going across. It is the voltage. So if that was showing 12 volt at the, uh, the fridge, and you said, oh geez, this fridge is warm and it's getting 12 volt in, and it's not coming down and getting cold, you know that it's the fridge, because it's got the amount of voltage coming out of here that it requires to run, so it's not a nomad issue. So most people go to the power source saying, well, that's the problem. It's not. Most cases, 99.9% .9 of the cases, it's the fridge, and people don't understand that they were running the fridge as a freezer at minus 15, and 50 degrees outside, they'll say, I'm only getting a day and a half out of the Nomad. At minus 15 and 50 degree heat, or living in, in a vehicle on a hot day, for example, it's going to draw probably four or five amp an hour. 
So at 80% DOD, math is math. It, you're not gonna get four or five days out of it if you're running in the freezer drawing four amp an hour. Four amp an hour, I say 20 hours, that's 80 amp hour. That's 20 hours, it's not even 24 hours, it's not a day. The fridge is gonna, the, the Nomad will give you 80%. It'll give you 80% DOD. So you need to understand your fridge first and foremost. You need to understand about voltage drop and the relationship between a power source, which is all this is, you could have any battery there, it's gonna do the same thing. It's providing voltage to your accessory, in this case being a fridge. So you need to understand how your fridge works and what you can expect out of it and how much amp on average are you drawing at what temperature are you setting it at. So if you're opening the fridge continually in and out to get your beers, obviously it's gonna be cutting the, um, it's gonna be using uh, more power from the Nomad because it's gonna cut in more often with the compressor. Uh, but if it's cutting out at 10.7 consistently, consistently, pretty much you look at the manual, it'll tell you that's it's cut out. This cut, this will actually kick back in once it receives 11 volt, and then the fridge will start operating again. So for me, it's not a problem when I'm cycling it every day. So you need to understand how you run your off-grid or your free camp, and, and then that tells you how you need to work out, you know, what you're gonna do with the Nomad, if you're gonna be cycling it, or if you wanna use the, um, a pocket inverter, for example, just to, to draw as much out of the Nomad as you can. So that's the fridge, understanding the fridge, and the first thing you want to look at is, is there an issue with the fridge? Especially when you've got voltage over 11 and a half volt, 11.3 or 11.4, if your fridge is getting warm at, at that voltage, you probably need to talk to the manufacturer as to, to why that is, especially if the, the thing cuts out at 10.6. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and again, power source, is simply that it's providing a current average or, or a voltage and that's simply all it does so i'm hoping that answers your questions about uh the, the, the basic voltage drop and the importance of understanding that voltage drop between a, a power source and a fridge okay and to get the most out of it make sure that you're running good quality dc cabling don't mess around with you know four mil cabling things like that run something like a six mil oex some you know good automotive dc cabling and then connect it to your fridge try to keep the runs as short as you can and that's basically the rule of thumb with anything. The longer your, your runs are, like lights for it as well, if you ran 50 metres of cable and one light at the end, it's gonna get, it's gonna be less bright than it would be at one metre from the unit because of the, volt, the voltage drop and current going across. So again, more than happy if you've got questions, contact nomadpdu.com.au. And if you've got questions about that relationship, again, look at your fridge manuals to start with. Um, and then if we can help you out, you know, you may need to use an inverter to draw as much as you can out of the Nomad, but it typically it's never the power source.